Tuesday now? We're doing well, March 11th. And I'm sitting here with producer, composer, guitarist, Paul Brown. And you are signed with Woodward Avenue Records. So before we get this started, let me congratulate you on the Funky Joint with a great CD. And before we go any further, isn't that where I'm sitting right now? This is the Funky Joint. Okay, and how did that name come about? Um, actually, this guy that I used to uh, work with a lot, Khalid Woods, came up with that name as a production company with Funky Joint Productions. Okay. And uh, the studio was kind of funky, so we thought, well, Funky Joint's a good name for the studio. And uh, we do a lot of funky music, so hey, it was a natural. A, it's appropriate then, right? So before we get into the CD, um, I'd like to ask you some questions just about music in general, if you don't mind. And then we'll get into the CD at the, at the tail end. I would like to know, with the internet being mm. a bittersweet, and I call it bittersweet, That's instrument true. in the industry, what are your thoughts on a full album on the shelf in a store versus the single uh, digital purchases that you can make on the internet? Well, I think luckily in our genre, most people buy the whole CD. I know in uh, pop and R&B a lot of times it's the single. Mm -hmm. I suppose from time to time it's the single in jazz, but typically it's the album in jazz. But I don't know, I mean it just seems to be the way of the future. There's nothing we can really do about it, so you have to embrace it. So with that being said, how has it impacted your career in the industry? Well, I just, it makes it difficult to sell records, you know, obviously. And the, everybody's sales have, have come down significantly. Right. Um, but basically, the, the CDs are a tool to be used to get live performance gigs and to, uh, you know, get out there. And, and it's just another vehicle it's just PR, it's not really, before it was like sort of selling records was the end game and it was, you know, everything to do with the music business. But now, because you can't really sell records right. because of the internet, but by the same token, like last night, I think, <clears throat> I mean, the crowd was just huge. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was due to a large extent by the internet and Facebook and all these right. people like came together, right. you know? And uh, so it's pretty amazing in that way. So with um, jazz radio stations kind of falling off the dial, I mean, I know you, you have one out here in California. I was listening to it on the way here. But, I mean, uh, in Detroit we've lost ours. I mean, yeah. they're, they're falling off everywhere. You guys lost a lot of things in Detroit. Oh, we did. Not just jazz radio. <laughs> Wait, that's Soon a whole, the entire that's a whole population is going to be gone. <laughs> They'll still have a radio station, but no one will be there. Why do you think that there um, are so many jazz fans out there, but yet when it comes to the sales to support it, um, it kind of falters a little bit? Well, I, it's not just jazz. It's all genres of music. I mean, it's just it's just the way it is right now. Some Somehow, hopefully... Actually, they said in 2011, um, I think of CD sales were up like 15% and downloads were up like 28%. Mm -hmm. So things are maybe heading in the right, right direction. direction maybe. It's better than losing ground. Well, with so many, um, I know, for, especially for what I do, there's so many musicians and artists out there. How do you stay current with your audience as people's tastes change? You know, I, I don't think musicians think much about that mm -hmm. you know I mean honestly you come in the studio mm -hmm. uh, uh, an idea occurs to you you record it and you're not thinking well I wonder what these I mean I don't think it works that way right. you know not I don't and when it does work that way typically it doesn't work right. in doesn't the long work. run and when when I, I mean I get so many calls from people saying well I really want my single to sound like you know this Boney James song or this one of your songs or whatever and I'm like first of all I wouldn't do that mm -hmm. And there's just no point in doing that. And that's not how that occurred originally. Mm -hmm. It was just, that was the music that we were feeling at the time, and that's what came out of us. And when it's real like that, it works. But when you pander to that and, and try to, you know, push it something into what's not naturally, it's, it, people can hear that. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Um, 
looking back in your career, what was your one big break that got the ball rolling for you in the music industry? Well, I was a drummer, you know, that's what I really thought I would do for the rest of my life. And um, I was working at a recording studio as a, as a assistant engineer mm -hmm. and, um, and sort of on and off, but I was really making money as a drummer. And uh, when I got married, my brother-in-law, who was um, chief engineer at Warner Brothers at the time, mm -hmm. called me and said, well, how are you gonna support your wife? And I said, playing drums as usual. He goes, no, you come down and start working for me tomorrow. And that was at Warner Brothers, and that got me into the studio business. And that's where my you know, production um, career started, basically. So that was a really a big you know, shift in my musical journey, you know? Uh, as, I mean, the producing thing for like the last 30 years has been my main source of income and, you know. Right, right. Um, I could be a starving drummer right now. <laughs> well, that you aren't now, so we all know that. Um, what song do you love to perform the most? Does one stand out for you? Well, you know, it was funny because I haven't done the song Sweetness that I wrote with Marc Antoine, you know. But, but last night I did it with Najee and it was just like, I was, it was one of those in the moment kind of things, you know, you try to get that place when you're, when you're playing live and there's so many things going through your mind, but occasionally um, you get into this thing where you're just really in the moment. Right. And I was really feeling that last night with Najee on that song. But typically I like playing 24-7, you know. Right. Stuff that's kind of funky and you don't have to think a lot about. But, um, I mean, it's interesting playing live. I haven't done so much of it that I've just gotten to this, you know, into this groove where I can just turn everything off. So I'm just right. getting there. A little well, let's talk about that for a second. When you are on stage and you're playing live, what are all those things going through your head? I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass uh -oh. you. <laughs> all right, well, next question. <laughs> Um, you can draw your own conclusion. Okay, I will. Um, it's one, not that hard to figure out. No, I think you kind of gave it away. <laughs> uh, one word that describes what me music means to you. One word. Oh. First word that comes to mind. Spirituality. Okay. I mean, I, everybody always talks about, well, I'm not necessarily a religious person, but I'm a spiritual okay. person. And for me, it's like I realize that I get up in the morning and I, I'm either writing a song, producing a song, playing a song, performing a song, or mixing right. a song. So that music is really just in the fiber of what I do on a daily basis. And um, I guess that's my spirituality. Wow, that just kind of botched up my next question. Oh. Because I was going to ask you... What church what you it, no. What is a day like with Paul Brown when it does not involve music? Well, I am a, I'm an avid golfer. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm into, uh, into wine. I do this um, Monday night wine thing at my house every Monday night. And I am working on a TV show called right. Pino Envy about wine and music. And um, so, so that's, that's uh, you know, a large part of my evenings, you know, but right. uh, I mean, I golf and I, and I play music and I'm really, that's not that much more to it. I mean, you know, I have two kids right? and um, so there's that and we homeschool my son. So I have to take him, PE is my, you know, I'm a teacher for PE, oh. so I have to take him golfing. Nice. Oh my goodness. That is so great. All right. So now we're going to talk about the funky joint. Funky joint. And you um, have some great guests on the CD. How did you select or how did they become a part of the project? I literally went down through my phone book and anybody who agreed to do it, that's who's on now. It, um, you know, it's like the people that I've been working with, I mean, Boney and Huge. Um, and I just started doing this concert with Darren. Right. So Darren played on a song. And um, <clears throat> um, Bob James is someone who I've just always wanted to play, you know, a uh, piece of music with, and I've produced for him, and, and he's played on stuff that I've produced, but I've never had a chance to actually do a song together, so that was like really a big one for me, so, um, and that was, that was a fun song, Backstage Pass. I, um, I have a couple, I have two that are my favorite, I think I had uh, emailed you and told you those, but uh, 
Um, what does your creative process entail when you are starting a CD project? Is there some kind of regimen you go by, or is it it just happens? It just, just happens. happens. Yeah. I mean. I mean, it's kind of Groundhog Day over here. I mean, I, I am in the studio a lot and um, either working with other artists, but you know, typically I'll, I'm not like writing for me, you know, on purpose. Usually it's, I'm just writing. And then if that song happens to be something that Boney likes, then he'll do it or, you know, or one of the other artists I'm working with. Um, and if it turns out nobody wants it, Usually ends up on my CD. Then you do it. You know? yeah. But occasionally, like on the song Funky Joint, um, I wrote that with a guy that wrote 24-7 with me. And I, I just, I, I called him and I said, look, I really want a song like 24-7 again. Mm -hmm. You know, funky, old school, like mm -hmm. that. And so we really worked hard to make that song for this project. So that in that case, it did work out that way. Right. But typically it's just, you know, the, the flow of just creating music all the time and there's, a certain amount of songs that are sort of backlogged and you figure, okay, well this one sounds great on guitar. Because other songs, I had this one recently that I really was going to put on my record and then I had um, a sax player do it and it was like, wow, it sounds amazing on saxophone. And I've had other experience where I tried to do it on saxophone and it really sound more like a guitar song. So, you know, I see. every song has its own little evolution. Yeah. The CD, um not only has a jazzy flavor to it, but I can definitely hear the blues yeah. in there. Um, I get a feeling, oh my gosh, when I heard that, can we have a little bit of that? <laughs> it's a classic, you know. I mean, that's... Johnny song. Guitar Watson. Right. That's who that song, that's who wrote that song. I did one of his songs, uh, Bad Mother For You, real bad, uh, yeah. I did that on a couple a couple CDs back, and I, I was on a cruise with Wayman Tisdale, and um, after my set, Wayman was backstage. And he goes, "Man, I gotta tell you, your guitar playing and your vocal really reminds me of Johnny Guitar Watson." I said, "Well, that's really weird because I really, I mean, I've heard him, but I never really listened to his stuff carefully or right. or anything like that. So when I got home, I actually listened to it, and I was like, "Man, he's right. There is a similarity." So that's when I decided to do uh, Real Mother for you. Oh, wow. And, um, and then I had heard, I get a feeling, and I just, I love the song. Yeah, it's, it's great. And your your rendition, the way you uh, portray it with your flavor, was just, it just like, it, you put it at the very end of the CD. So as I went through the CD, I and then that was at the end. you skip forward to that now? No, no. Um, but I do just have... start with it. No. <laughs> I do, I don't, right now, if I'm being totally honest with you, the one that keeps sticking with me is Love Don't Come Easy. I don't know why that sticks with me. You just I love, love my voice. I love the lyric. I mean, it's truth. And uh, I think you sing it great. And it's just, it sounds great. Okay. It sounds great. Um, but the whole scene Well, that one was kind of an great. exercise because I wanted to do... Now in blues, you got like, you know, the thrill is gone, guitar, right, guitar, right, guitar. Right. The thrill is gone, guitar, guitar, guitar. But um, in R&B music, that doesn't really happen right. where you have like a vocal and a guitar line. Right. So I wanted to write a song because that has sort of a Ron Isley, yeah. you know, between the sheets kind of vibe yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to try and write a R&B song that did that where it had guitar after each phrase. Mm -hmm. And it, it came out nice, I think. I don't know. It did. It, it came out great. Everything came out great. Um, now you've got the CD out, and um, you will be um, doing some touring with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As much as possible. Possible. No. Well, we're working on trying to get you to Detroit. So yeah. we'll see. I've been up there. I've played up there once before. You did River uh, Raisin, Raisin. Yeah. and I was there. And I was there another mm -hmm. time, too, with uh, AZ. Um, yeah, we yes. played some theater somewhere. Uh, I think that might have been guitars and saxes or something. Oh, okay. Like yeah. Um, and your music, your website is paulbrownjazz.com. paulbrownjazz.com. And this CD is everywhere digitally. And for physical, you can get the physical copies um, there, but they don't. Yeah, Amazon like, is the probably the best place to get that. But uh, I get whatever stores are in your area, you know. Well, Paul, I appreciate your time in inviting me into your home. I'm glad you got a chance to come out to L.A. Yeah. It's great. Well, I, you know, I try and find excuses to come out. <laughs>
So we are going to wrap it up then, and uh, it's recording that. So.